Imagine your book series flying off the shelves, captivating young minds, and maybe even being the next big thing in mid-grade fiction. Sounds exciting, right? But hang on, we're not diving into writing just yet. Before we craft our magical worlds and compelling characters, we need to lay the foundation for success. And that starts with something not as flashy, but equally magical. A serious business plan. Stay with me here. I know planning might sound tedious, especially when your creative mind is bursting with ideas. But trust me, this plan is your roadmap to turning those fantastical stories into reality and ensuring they find their way into the hearts and hands of eager young readers. So let's roll up our sleeves and dive into creating a business plan that's as creative and dynamic as the stories we're about to tell. Angie here. If this is your first time, welcome to Bite Sized Booksmith. For those following along from home already, welcome back. As you recall from last week, I shared the plan for our mid-grade fiction series. We're still in what I call the pre-writing phase. Today, we're going to begin talking about the series business plan, or as I like to call it, the ultimate plan for mid-grade fiction domination. Your series business plan is a living document, which means that you can constantly make changes, add things, and remove them if they don't make sense anymore. Nothing here is chiseled in stone. This week, you're going to get two things from me. One, you'll get this document that I created for the series that I'll be building in the course. And two, you'll also receive this Notion document that you can download into your Notion workspace to serve as a template for your own series business plan. Just click the duplicate button and a copy will appear in your Notion account. Before we get started, I want to caution you about three things. First, you may be tempted to skip this step. You may think that it's boring and be tempted to jump into something more exciting than a business plan. But I want you to remember that you're not simply writing a book or a series. We're building something here that has the ability to change your life and the lives of others. Second, it's 100% okay not to know the answer to a question or to skip a question or even a section completely if it doesn't make sense to you. You are the captain of this ship, and you need to follow your intuition. I'm just here to guide you and show you what works for me. Lastly, don't let what I've written here overwhelm you. I've had a bit of time to think about this since I started brainstorming in September. I also wanted to make sure that you have enough content as an example to draw your ideas from. So you don't have to write a mini novel in each section like I did in some of mine. Okay, that's enough small talk. Let's take a look at the series business plan for the book series that we'll be writing in this video series. Okay, so let's get started here at the top. Author information. Here's a place for you to put your author pen name, if you know it already, your publisher, if you know it already, and your editor, if you know who it's going to be. I know ahead of time that my pen name is going to be Aurora Morgan. I actually already have a children's book. It's actually a picture book published by this author name. And I also picked out a publishing publisher already, which is going to be my own, Enigma Guild Publishing. And for the editor, I might get someone from Reedsy. I don't know yet. So let's go ahead and close this one up and move down. Series overview. I don't know what the title is going to be yet. And for the launch date, I'm thinking May. I really would like to have more than one book ready, possibly three before I launch. That's just, I have a tendency not to finish things. So I want to be ready. And for the book formats, I've chosen ebook, paperback, as well as audiobook. Maybe later I could do a hardback that has a couple of the books together. I don't know. But that's what I'm thinking so far. So let's move on to the audience analysis. And again, don't get overwhelmed. I know exactly who I'm writing for. And I'm very specific. So my private primary audience is actually going to be 12 year old boys. Interests, games, books, other media, and then under special considerations, They have ADHD and dyslexia. And then who are my secondary audience? So my buyers are going to be the parents and the guardians, as well as educators and librarians. 
And I'll let you guys read through these. So let's move down to the market research summary. It's blank because we're doing this next week. So make sure you come back and we'll for the market research. Okay, let's move down. This is really important here. What is your why for your series? Personally, my kid is 12 and he's dyslexic and has ADHD. And he doesn't like to read. As his mom and as an author, I feel compelled to fix that. <laughs> and then for a broader impact, my publishing house, Enigma Guild Publishing, is going to be focused on helping to create books for boys so that they'll learn to love reading. And then identifying early adopters. I've got a, a whole list of things here. You've got communities and forums, launch team, email list, Facebook groups, your family, your friends, and social media. And then marketing channels and strategies, as well as collaborations and partnerships. And then also a promotional timeline. If you are completely confused, you have no idea, have a conversation with ChatGPT. Explain what you're doing. Answer, tell it, this is what my plan is, and then give it the questions and let's see what it has to say. At the end of the day, it's your decision. So if there's something on there that doesn't speak to you, there's a couple of things that I just did not agree with and I didn't put on here. But I did, I had a conversation with the chat about some of these things. And remember, they can change. Financial planning. This is probably going to be the hardest for you to do. It's fun to create books, but it's hard to think about how much it's going to cost you. I've got my Novel Crafter, my Chat GPT Pro, web hosting and email list, Mid Journey, Canva. Just off the top, I'm paying over $140 a month on just monthly stuff. I do use this in my business. I do use it in other projects. So it's not all one just specifically for this project, but it is a bit of money there. For the cover, I'm going to design my own. And then remember, I talked about doing a Roblox collaboration with my son. I'll have to pay for any kind of pr premium subscription and developmental costs. Coming down here to pricing strategy for books, my idea is to start at $3.99 price point, at least for the first book. And as time goes on to increase that, I'm also looking at possibly putting it in KU. And instead of making the book free to promote it, to use free promotion days through KU and Kindle countdown deals. And then possibly taking it wide in the future. Or maybe I'll just use this one in KU and another series that I'll take wide. It all depends. And then also additional revenue streams. Royalties aren't that much. So there's possible you could sell it on your own website if you go wide. Or you can also sell print copies on your own website. We've got that Roblox game I've been talking about. There's, po there's possible for merchandising. You can get people to sponsor you either on Patreon or Ream. I actually signed up for Ream just to see how <laughs> so this morning. So you can actually see what my account looks like. There's really nothing on it yet. And then there's also a possible future adaptation. So maybe you decide to do a graphic novel in the future or a web series or a podcast. So that's under that section. Let's move on to brand and community engagement. There's a lot here. Uh, I will let you guys read through it. I, one thing I will say is uh, my brand identity. I'm actually going to go through the process with you guys of creating a pen name probably sometime next month in a series similar to this. And so if you don't already have a pen name, if you don't already have a brand, don't worry about it. Brand alignment, reader engagement strategies, post launch strategies for reader retention. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. I wanted to make sure I preserved it. It's not necessarily something that I'm going to look at right now, but after the books come out, maybe that's something that it'll spark an idea. So short-term goals. 
With this section, I was very uncomfortable and I have a feeling you will be too. I set goals that were scary. Let's be honest. These are some scary goals. Selling 500 to 1,000 copies in the first three to six months. And I mean that across all the versions. So ebook, print, audiobook. That makes me feel nauseous. I will be honest. But I know that if I don't set myself a goal that is uh, competitive, then I will lose focus. Keep that in mind. Set a goal, put a little flag in the ground and say, this is how many books I'm going to sell and then do your best to get to it. You may not. You may get more. You may have 1,500 copies after three months. But like I said, go ahead and give yourself that goal, no matter how weird it feels. Also, I've got some long-term goals. Do I know if these are doable? Absolutely not. I have no idea, but I'm going to try. And this gives me something on the horizon to look forward to, to look towards and keep me on track. And also down here to success metrics. So sales volume, revenue, market penetration, reader engagement, as well as reader demographics. So again, if these things don't mesh with you, if they don't make sense to you, leave them out. But I do definitely recommend looking at the goals of the metrics, also your financial planning. And again, you'll have access to this. I'll provide the link. But yeah, it's going to be fun. You're probably either really super excited to get started, incredibly overwhelmed, or maybe even a little bit of both. And I can tell you that I personally am in the both section. So check the, tri the description of the video, and that's where you're going to find the links to the Notion template and the copy of the series business plan. Next week, we're going to dig into one of my favorite parts of the process, which is research. And then as always, I invite you to this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment. Are you planning on using the series business plan? If so, what do you think will be the most valuable part of the plan for you? So this is Angie signing off. Have an amazing week and I will talk to you guys soon.